Let's take a look at how to install BMC64. BMC is a project by Randy Rossi, who most recently did the new VIC-2 chip, the Akari, Makari, Vakari, something Kari, Kavari, the Kavari VIC-2. And BMC64, I think, is from 2020 or 2019. And the idea is, and that is what the BM stands for, the bare metal. So there's no Linux layer for the Raspberry Pi. It just boots into the C64 and this takes just three or four seconds. And it features uh, an almost no lag and a really good implementation. And it's based on the Vice C64. So it says here you have quick boot time C64 and 4.1 seconds. Frames are synced, low latency, no shutdown sequence, just can just power it off. High compatibility high compatibility uh, thanks to VICE because it's based on VICE. Um, easy wiring for joysticks on the GPIO pins, we will take a look at that later. And even the original Commodore keyboard. And it also works with the Kira if you want to use one and don't want to do the wiring yourself. But well, the Kira is hard to get at times and the wiring is quite easy. And it's sort of free, so I will show you how to do that. And uh, what it doesn't say is that with the BMC64 there also comes the 128, the VIC-20 and the PLUS4. So you have four machines which are bare metal and this is really great because he put it all into one distribution and you have just one file to install. So the most important thing to do is to go to the BMC64 website which is exchangecom slash BMC64. So you need a blank SD card and then you go to downloads and you don't download the zip file here, you download the image file because the image file is already done and what you get is pretty much a blank um, installation and you only have to add the kernel and the ROM stuff. And I will show you how to do that in a minute because it's a bit involved but not much. So let's download the image zip. There we have it. And you just unpack this wherever you like. I already have it unpacked on my desktop because I already did all this. And then you open Berliner Etcher. I will put a link in the description. And you say flash from file. Your SD card should be inserted into the machine. Uh, desktop. Find the BMC64 image. Select target, which is the SD card. And I think it has to be at least eight gigs. Not sure, could be. I have a 64 gig card, but I'm deleting it anyway. So you say select and you say flash. And that takes a moment. And that's the SD card flashed. You can just close this down and open this up. And as you can see, there is no SD card, so you have to eject it and put it back in the machine. I will just do that. And there it is again. And you can see it's a complete installation and you have different folders for the machines. And it says put ROMs here. So you have the C64, 128. You have the PET, the PLUS4, the PLUS4 EMU, which is a better implementation for the Raspberry Pi 3 and it's a little bit faster and you have the WIG20. So these are the machines and you have to provide ROMs for all of them in their respective folders. You also have a directory called carts, disks and tapes and PRGs and um, here you can put your carts and this is again organized by machine and these are the default directories. So if you say um, mount a cart you will on the C64 you will end, you will end here. So it will put you into the, these default folders. So put your software here and here and here and here. We theoretically could put this card in, into a Raspberry Pi 3 and we would get just a black screen which says no ROMs. 
and to change that we have to put ROMs here. So let's see and it says here we have to go and put a kernel, the character generator, the basic and the D1541.2 ideally ROM here. So these are the four ROMs and we can find these on zimmers.net. I will put a link in the description. Problem is they are not named like they are named here. So we have for example the character ROM and you have different character ROMs here and what we want to have is we want the standard character ROM. Let me quickly check the Swedish, Spanish, Danish and we want that one here. So let's just save that somewhere and it's called a bin file. So let me quickly put that. Yeah, I already have these downloaded here. So what you want to download is basic.901226-01, the characters 9012201, the kernel SX251104. And as you can see, I just selected pretty much the same here. If I say save, that's already there. So we need um, this one. We want to have the SX kernel, which is Scandinavian. We want this one right here. We want, uh, where's the basic? We want this basic. And we want yeah, the floppy ROMs, but these are not here. These are, if you go back and you go to drives, new, haha, 1541. And there you should find a 5041.2 ROM, which is this one right here. And you download that. And since I already did all that, Let's go to the download folder and here are our ROMs and we have to rename these and you have to be very careful to rename these correctly because the, the emulator just searches for these names and if you don't provide these names you're out of luck. There's no way to get this running without naming these correctly. So let's see what these should be named like. Kernel, character gen or char gen, basic D1541 II. It's two eyes. We have to remove the bin because we don't need the, need the bin. D1541 II. We have to call this just basic and again remove the bin. We have to rename this to Chargen and this to Kernel and that's with an A. And then we go and we copy these four files over to our SD card in the C64 folder where it says put ROMs here. Just say insert. And you have your C64 up and running. That is just the C64 and I will only do the C64 in this video. If you don't want to do all this stuff, I have C64, C128, PET++, plus four AMU and VIC20 ready in a zip file which you can download from my website. So you just unpack it here and it will override your C64, 128 uh -huh, folders with all the kernels ready to rock. Since we are here, let's quickly check out the config file because if you do this yourself and you try to, for example, uh, start the pet and have all the ROM files in there, but there's one missing or named wrong, you will get a black screen and the machine will stay on that black screen. It will not automatically go back to the C64. It says in the manual that you can do this with keys, but didn't work for me. So the, the easiest way is you go into the config. If you scroll down, completely, you will find the last booted machine here. So if you boot a machine other than the C64, which is the default, it will be here. It will say here PET or plus four or WIC20 or 128. And if you delete this line, which is here, some 
some machine that's booting, just delete that line and save the config file and you're good to go. And you, your machine will boot into the C64 again. You can also do some um, changes here. And so that's the config. And if we want to change, for example, the audio output, we have to go into the machines file and machines.txt. And here you can configure all the machines. So there's settings for all the machines and the screens and stuff like that. So the WIC20 has different modes here. C64, all the machines have their own modes. And what I will do now is I will set the audio to analog. And it says in the documentation that you should do that for every machine. So I would have to put audio out on every single one, but I'm just using the C64 PAL HDMI Vice. So if I put audio out analog here, that should do the trick. I'm not sure if I use this or this up here. So I will put the audio out here too. And if this works, you just uh, add it to all the other machine settings here. Okay, so that should pretty much be it here. Yeah, I think we are good to run this on the Pi now. Uh, by the way, all the other settings are done on the Pi itself or in the, in the emulator. So configuring the joysticks, switching joysticks, all that stuff is all done in the emulator. And I will show you that when we boot the machine for the first time. So let's talk about the joysticks. You can buy these joystick ports, these nine pin Atari joystick ports with these connectors on here. I soldered these myself, but you can buy these ready-made. I will link these in the description to the video. And what we can do is we can just use some DuPont cables to connect to this. And then we connect these to the Pi because in the BMC64 there's actually a function to use the GPIO pins as the joystick connection. So you don't need anything like Kira or stuff like that. You can even use a real C64 keyboard, which I don't, but you could. And you can see in the, the uh, documentation of the BMC64 how to use this. What I will do now is I will connect two joysticks to the, B, uh, to the um, Pi 3 and um, then we have the controller situation solved. We have to do some software settings. I will show you where to do that. And yeah, that is pretty much it. So it's just putting on some cables and we need six cable per connector. So three pins are not used. And um, I will show you how to do this. So I have my joysticks connected already here, or my joystick ports, and you can so switch in the software between uh, this block here, which is block one, and this block down here, which is block two, and you can decide which joystick is which. You can also only do one joystick, and you can switch in the software, and uh, if you only use this uh, on your own, then you don't, don't have to actually connect two joysticks. So this is already connected. You can see it's the same, and these go exactly the same. I have these colors here, I have purple, blue, green, and yellow for the top rows. And these just connect to the pins one, two, four, like this, just like here. And on the other side, I have brown and black and brown goes to pin six and black goes to pin eight, which is ground. And that is pretty much all there is. And then you have to connect these to the Pi and uh, not sure if you can see that very well. These connections are different on these two blocks. So you have, um, I, will, I will put up a little graphic here so that you can see which color goes where. Um, yeah, use the same colors as I do or do it accordingly and then you will be good to go. And this is the controllers solved and you can use any normal joystick on that. I have my, what's it called? The Retro Radionics Arcader here which in my opinion is the best ever joystick for the C64 and Amiga and all the 8-bit machines. So you just connect that here and off you go. 
yeah, what you see right here is the actual image of the machine. And if you press F12, you get into the menu. I have lots of options like switching the machine. If you go to switch here and you say WIG20, for example, you can select which WIG20 you would like to see. And let's say we want to see this one right here and you say reboot and OK. And it takes one, two, three, four, five, six seconds and you are in a WIG20. So let's switch back to, to the C64. And I'm right now using the PAL HDMI Vice 768 by 545 at 50.125 megahertz. So a reboot, and here's a which is the sound. Yeah, and here you can see I have actually some settings active so that it looks a bit more on the side. I can see so you can see it better some settings active that it gets a little bit more CRT looking. Yeah, and if you want to attach um, disks, you can do this here. Just select drive eight, attach disk, and you can select one of the disks here. Or you can go and go to cartridges and attach cart. And then Let's say Tarakin, and I have Drive Sounds emulated. Yeah, that's the lovely Tarakin. Yeah, and uh, as you can see, I can run, run around, do stuff, shoot with just one hand. Let's try to beat Tarakin one handed. No, I can't do that. I'm really bad at this game. Now, there's absolutely no lag here. Let's quickly check the settings I have here because you will need these if you want to use the joysticks the way I um, connected them. So keyboard, you don't have to do anything. That is just if you connect a C64 keyboard. Um, joy ports. I right now have my port 1 on GPIO Bank 2 and my port 2 on GPIO Bank 1 doesn't really matter. You can just swap these ports and this is what it does. It just swaps the ports. You can add more joysticks if you like, but that is not what we do here. And what you need to do is you need to check that your config is nav and joy, not keyboard and joy, not wave share, not for, not custom, not disabled. It has to be nav and joy because only then do these banks and these connections match what we have here. And if you did that, you just say save settings and the settings are saved. And next time you boot, you get exactly these settings. I have drive sound emulation on, which is uh, that you can hear uh, 1541 in the background if you load from disk. Yeah, it's looking for files in the C64 directory, which is where the CRT and uh, disk images and stuff like that are residing. I showed you that in the video when I uh, set up the BMC64. So video, I have um, a shader on right now and I have the Triniton mask type that gives the slight scan lines, which you can see if I hold the camera like that. Yeah, that is pretty much all there is to this. So now. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share, and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.